Hi everyone. So welcome back to the second lesson, second lecture of the LLM mastery. So in the previous video, we have discussed about the introduction to LLM, about the unlocking the power of large language models. We have seen about the complex architecture and the extensive training data set. Again, this thing are the theoretical thing which I have just explained. Till now, I have not went with any practical. Even I have did not went with the how LLM model works, their functionality, and each and everything. In much detail, I am going to post in the upcoming videos. So in this video. we are going to talk about the history and evolution of the llm model because uh, before starting before jumping with the history of the models llm model how it has been started from the early nlp models and it how it is in the modern uh, scenarios so we'll just understand what the llm model is because the definition we can just see about the large language model are the advanced artificial intelligence system that is designed to understand generate and manipulate human language what the is basically means that the way we are just talking to any of the person the what the question we are going to ask the same way we are going to give the response based on what their understanding their knowledge so the same type of things that lm model we are just going to take the we are just going to train on the based on the uh, variety of data set we have large amount of data set we have complex model and we want to just train our model and build the model it will give as it is the response as the human you are going to interact with the humans so they are really the subset of deep learning models because deep learning model is like you have n number of billions of parameters and each parameter you will have some weights and it just do the mistake it learn from the mistake so this all thing i i hope so you know about the concept of the deep learning and uh, and this already uh, we have discussed in the previous lecture that it has been trained on the vast amount of data set whether it is basically the text data set it has been trained on and you can just perform a wide range of natural and processing tasks whether it's going to be about the sentiment analysis where it's going to be a text generation and the transition summarization uh, you can just use n number of things n number of tasks based on the llm models so here is the basic the key concept which already we have discussed in the previous video we'll go with the one by one so we can just see the understanding the context of the data because whatever the training data you are going to fit to the your large language model that is really a crucial things because based on that data set the model is learning and based on that the model is behaving and giving you response so uh, whenever we are just talking about the use of variety of use of the llm model it can use in anywhere of the text data whether you are going with the text generation whether you going with the any type of translation any of the language tra translation from any of the language you can go with the summarization you need a summary of any of the models or uh, any of the data and you can go with the, again the sentiment analysis again the here i am just i have just given you the four hints but again there are you can use variety of uses the use cases there nowadays and whenever you just talk about the scale of your llm model you can scale llm can scale with the increasing of the your data set because whatever the power of your llm you are increasing did that llm model needs more amount of data set also and again whenever you have large mo large model large number of parameters large amount of data again the computational power is going to be increased because it when whatever the model you are training on the n number of gpus there might be n square and based on that uh, you are going to training your model and you want the performance of model can be improved every time so now this was really the basic thing which i i need to just discuss what about the llm model before starting with the uh, history and evolution of the llm model the first we are going to talk about the during the 1950s and 1960 the first early nlp model was there at the first attempt they have started they we call as a rule based system so where it is linguistic manually crafted the rules for the la language processing it is basically you can just think about like something chat gpt so sorry you can just think about the chat board they are just developing and in that chat board you have some question and again the same question they have the answer in their excel sheet so whatever the question you are going to ask they are picking that response and giving you the back so there is nothing any rule based they they are the rule based system they are not using any ai techniques they don't use even the machine learning te technique that we call as statistics now in 1970s and during the 1980s they started moving with the a uh, statistics approach because this was a rule based algorithm but whenever there are something new things arises they really don't know and if the question does not match they won't give you the correct response they win they went with the probability form like based on the question what which which answer is going to be the best response whatever the things but again this is also a rule based algorithm type but again advance of you are using a probability to match which is which response is give, going to give you the better response and then here you can just see about 
they use the anagram model and they use the hidden markov models that we call as hmms and they can just improve over the times but again this was the again the research has been conducted now they have moved with the now we can just say the emergence of the neural network so the neural network is really a not a new things the research has been already started in 1990s but we don't have anything to implement we don't have any gpu's power even we don't have any cpu's power but we have the model we have the things like even in the computer vision they have so much of model has been there and started researching on during the 1990s but there are nothing to implement but uh, because of this nvidia power they they started implementing of utilizing the gpu scores and this all thing again this thing we are going to discuss in the upcoming videos so during the 1990s uh, they, they started with the first neural network begins with the different type of things like they start with the shallow some kind of uh, had limited capacity and they want to just th see how this thing is going to be work on but in 2000 2000 you can just say the first deep learning model you can approach that we call as a recurrent neural network so whenever you will just start with the nlp task nlp model or learning in the nlp you will see about the rnn model you will see about the lstm model again they are really the not a best model for using for the large language model because they are using as a sequence data type i am not going to be really deeper in this whole thing i have uploaded this whole thing video in my youtube channel you can go and just view this videos but again the rnn and lstm is basically a rule uh, it is not a rule based algorithm it is a deep learning techniques where it just improve over the time but they have some limitation that is basically they are just allowing for the basically they approach with the sequential data types whatever the data you are going to fitting in that it is going to be in the sequence approach once the data is approved in the second time stem third time stem then then data need to wait for the uh, complete for the n number of data but whenever you are applying any uh, developing a large model and large amount of data it will take n number of time to complete your model training and even it won't give you much better accuracy because it, it, there is a really problem of long term dependency so if you are going with the 100 words before and it is going to forget you don't have any memory in this so this was the really the problem with rn and lst then the things here has been arises that we call the rise of transformer model i think this is going to be the game changer for every of the llm model in 2017 they have started the transform model has been introduced by washwani and their team and they have performed they have just significant breakout in the whole NLP task. The NLP was really on the high peak because in 2017, 2018, the computer vision was really overtaken by the NLP. But I think nowadays everything is going to move with the NLP model. They are basically say the transformer model basically use the self attention mechanism, basically enabling them to process the entire sentence or document at that once rather than going to be the sequentially as we have discussed in the LLM, uh, as we have discussed with the LSTM model, we have discussed with the RNN model. It works really in the sequence step but how some model can we just take a data set whatever the documents we have and just fit to the model directly that we call as a parallel model training and this is what the transformer has been taking place again this transformer self and this all thing you don't have to worry now i am going to explain in much and much details i am just going to here just explain you how the llm model has come from from where to where in 2018 and 2020 there is model models like bird that we call is bi-direction encoder representation from the transformer that was introduced by the google and again the open source gpt that we call as a generative pretend model transformer that was released by the open ai so basically this is the they are based on the transformer architecture to achieve their start and result in the various nlp tasks again that they have the first research they have started after developing the transformer model and then we call as a modern nlm i have included here in the gpt3 there is gpt4 in the market they have 175 billions of the parameters you can imagine how the model is really really complex model and how much of data set they have just utilizing to just build this model because whatever whenever you are just interacting with gpt3 gpt4 model you can't even think like the the machine is going to give you the response the way whatever the question you are going to ask even based on they have really high accuracy nowadays and they are just improving day by day you will find somewhere around like gpt5 gpt6 and so on even now we can we can't say that the continuous advancement research and training is already there in the market so there are so much of research and developing r d is there in the market it's not about the fix that gpt is taking the market now currently gpt we can just say about it's really better giving a better performance than a google bard and the 
the rest of the llama model but again it is really not a fix in the next few years we can just say google bard is going to overtake by the gpt architecture so we really don't know what's happening in this uh, real world this is the model llm model is like so you can just see about how the research and uh, t5 model llm model and gpt llama model, model they are just using the power of gpus and with the help of they have billions of the parameters and they have large number of resource of the data set and based on that they are going to give us the response generate the response so i hope so you have just clear with this history and evolution of the large language model in the next video we are going to discuss again in the more technical things about the transformer we'll see about the large language model and so on so i hope so you like this video thank you so much for taking the time and completing this video thank you